I hope you're all having a wonderful day. I'm here very cozy today, very toasty, it, yeah, uh, <laughs> in my toaster sweater from So House 7, which is one of my most recent makes. I am super pleased with how it's turned out. It was a very quick and simple make, particularly given that I've never made a sweater or a jumper before. I would call this a jumper. We've had this chat before. What do you guys call it? Everyone calls it something a bit different. Um, so a sweater I think is more of an American word. I think that So House 7, to the best of my knowledge, are an American sewing pattern company and they are the company who have brought out this lovely pattern. Um, so let's talk about the toaster sweater. The reason I chose this pattern, uh, well one of the reasons I chose this pattern, not just because I liked it, was because it's part of the Sew My Style project and it was the January project, but January for me was a bit of a washout. I was quite ill and I was also just quite enjoying having a rest from my sewing after Christmas, after that sort of Christmas manic, you know, everything going on, everyone it was also super busy. So January was a bit of a chill month for me. So I didn't push myself to get this done in January. I actually waited and sewed it up in February and it's still freezing cold. I will still be needing to wear jumpers till at least May, most likely. I mean, this is quite a lightweight jumper, so I'd happily wear this in April, probably in London, because it's quite a cold place to live. Uh, so, <laughs> generally speaking. So, let me show you the sweater first of all. So, it is incredibly simple. It has a, uh, it has bands. I'm actually, oh, before I tell you this, I should probably say, there are two versions of the toaster sweater. I made version number one of the toaster sweater. So I used this lovely polka dotted polyester blend jersey knit, which is from Fabricland. It was 3 dollars per meter. I bought 1.5 meters and it was absolutely ample for this jumper. That's a 1.5 meter square that I used. And it's really lovely because of the way that it's finished. So the neck is finished with a turtleneck like this, or it's quite a slouchy one. I think if I were to use a firmer jersey, which it does say in the instructions, then the neck would sort of stand up, which would be quite nice. But I don't really mind it being a bit slouchy. I think it looks quite cute anyway. It's also finished on the cuffs with these very large bands. And then also around the bottom with a very large band. So it's finished very cosily. Obviously that uses more fabric, but not a lot more, but it's just something to bear in mind that if you're used to making a jersey top out of one meter of fabric, you might want to get a little bit more because um, of the bands. So I actually used just a normal domestic sewing machine, my sewing machine, um, to make this up. And just using a zigzag stitch, it did not need an overlocker. So that's quite a good thing. If you don't have an overlocker, you can definitely still make this sweater. Um, I'll show you it from the back. It's, I'm wearing it with a little velvet skirt today for a little casual look. Um, and from the back, it's very simple. So it, it's quite slouchy and quite loose, which is exactly what you would want from a jumper, or I would want from a jumper. So yeah, it's very um, cozy. I've got a top underneath, I've got a skirt to sort of obviously lead underneath. I think I could fit other things underneath it. <laughs> so I always wear a vest as well, so I've got my vest underneath here as well. So yeah, super warm and cozy and slouchy. So this is how I did my pattern envelope. I cut out the name, which comes on the PDF. It's a PDF pattern. And I actually decided to cut straight into it. Um, yeah, you probably shouldn't do that. I know everyone traces them off, but I don't. Um, and it was very quick to assemble this PDF pattern. There were really not that many pages to it. Um, and I went for the size small. So if I show you, the, this is one of the pieces as an example. Uh, they're well labelled, um, so you know exactly what you need to do. Everything is marked on, the grain line, everything. You know, notches. So really, really simple to follow. Um, and yeah, and I cut the size small and I wear a UK size 10. So I would say, yeah, I would say it's quite a good fit. I wouldn't want it to be any tighter. So as I said, I went for the PDF version of the pattern. That's purely because I didn't want to pay for postage. Um, and if I just open this up now, I can tell you how many pages it was. So it comes with the option, it comes with a copy shop option, an A0 one, which you could use, or you could do what I did, which is just the print at home one, although I don't actually print it at home, I do actually print it in a coffee shop, um, because I don't have a printer, but yeah, it's a lot cheaper to just print it onto A4, A4 and stick it together. And the men in the coffee shop are really friendly and they guillotine um, two sides for me, which is really, really helpful. So yeah, the pattern is only, ba -ba -bum, uh, 20, 32 pages, but two of them are instructional. So actually I think you could quite easily get away with just printing 30 pages. 
which is really not a huge amount and it does provide you um, in the instructions with details of how to assemble it obviously but it's it's pretty simple it's pretty straightforward assembling um, I'm sure if you've done one ow that was stupid I just hit my own hand um, I'm sure if you've assembled one PDF pattern you've kind of assembled them all it's just a matter of putting them into rows and I use a Pritt stick which I think was Jessica Lorraine's Little Miss Lorraine's idea which I thought was such a good idea and now I use a Pritt stick too so thank you very much it makes life so much quicker and easier so the instructions are very straightforward I never bother printing them I just keep them on my iPad and have my iPad next to me it's a bit bright sorry but you can see the photograph of the pattern I'll put a photograph of it in here um, and the line drawing is really sweet and the instructions are very very detailed so the sizes go between an extra small which I would say is probably like a size looking at the measurements about a size UK size 8 maybe 6 to 8 up to a double XL so an extra extra large um, so you can go, the bust goes between 31 inches and 47 and a half inches. So that's a really good selection of sizes here. Even though there's only six sizes there, that's still quite a good range. Um, all in one PDF. So that's, that's very good, I think. It has a guide as well of how much your jersey needs to stretch. So you need something with 20% stretch, um, at least for it to fit and yeah, that just makes sense, doesn't it? Otherwise, you would not have a particularly comfortable jumper. It's not actually a huge amount of stretch, though, if you think about it. A lot of fabrics have, like, a 100% stretch or 50%, so it's not going to be super-duper stretchy because it's quite loose-fitting, as I've said. Um, it has, I'll show you the layout here, only six main pattern pieces. So it's very, is that six? Yes, it's six. I can count to six. So it has the front bodice and the back bodice, which you cut one of on the fold. It has, obviously, two sleeves, which you just cut on two layers and then it has two cuffs and one collar um, and it has the bottom band so yeah it's it, it comes together in a matter of hours um, which is which is obviously lovely it's nice to have a, a quick project sometimes they give you cutting layouts and um, the instructions are very good so if you are a beginner I would highly recommend this pattern I think I said in my last pattern review I've been making quite simple things clearly um, I'm trying new things new patterns but they don't, don't seem to be um, you know they're not too too challenging which is quite nice when you're just getting back in after a little break from sewing um so as i'll just show you quickly again, i won't show you everything but they have some uh diagrams no photographs but they have diagrams and they have detailed instructions which do not use too much jargon so that is obviously a bonus things that you'll need to buy if you're going to make this i would stabilize the shoulders using clear elastic so you need to buy a little bit of that um i use just regular thread not in this color but this is the thread that is next to me so i would use regular thread and the third thing which you have to have to have i would say is a ballpoint needle so i've ordered some needles online recently um which are special singer branded ones i'm finding they're actually even better than the non-branded ones or because I have a single machine. So yeah, that's worked out pretty well for me. Um, I would just say, yeah, if you don't use a ballpoint needle, this will probably not look that great because you'll probably get uh, skip stitches and things. And if you're using a zigzag stitch, it's important that that doesn't happen. The one thing which I did do differently on the on the instructions that gives you the option to use a twin needle to finish all around these, I actually couldn't get into this sleeve. I think it would be really fiddly. So I didn't bother doing that on those. And on the... Um, which one's here on the, this one around the waistline I just finished it with a zigzag stitch I do have twin needles I just don't particularly enjoy using them I find that it tunnels and I've tried and I people gave really helpful suggestions but I just cannot get it to it never looks as good as I wanted it to and it's it, I end up a bit frustrated and zigzag to me doesn't look offensive I quite like the look of it so I just did that I also did that around the neckline too um which I think is quite it says it's optional I think on the neckline but for me it's kind of essential otherwise the um, seam allowance will just kind of keep pinging upwards and be a bit annoying. So to summarise my toaster sweater, this is an excellent pattern, I would highly recommend it. It's very affordable, it sews up very quickly on an ordinary sewing machine. The fit is true to size, but I would say it's a loose fit, but it's really comfy and cosy, perfect for this time of year. Uh, my one thing is I would like to ask everyone if you have any tips on where to find sweater knit fabric. So. Uh, you know the kind of knit fabrics cozy knit fabrics you can make jumpers with please let me know in the comments down below because I have no idea I'm just really struggling to find things and I'd love to replace my knitwear with homemade knitwear everything else in my wardrobe apart from the undies is all handmade now of hand jumpers are the last thing which I have which are still shop bought so yes I'm not really planning on becoming a, an expert knitter anytime soon because it's just 
it's not my thing. <laughs> anyway, so that is everything for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video and you like my toaster sweater and you give it a go too. Do check out, I'll leave down below a link to the Sew My Style project as well because there's some really interesting stuff happening in there and I am loving seeing everybody's versions, everybody's takes on the same patterns. It's very interesting. So I hope to see you again soon. Please do click thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe for new sewing vlogs every week. I'll see you again soon. Bye!